I still see a couple crunchy faces. Let's all do it together. Gucci, 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 Gucci. I think that's what's missing in the world today. Gucci, 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 Gucci. Stop trying to preach at somebody or throw them the Bible, right? You just go up to them and go, Gucci, 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 Gucci. Uh, excuse me, I don't know you. Yeah, but Jesus loves you. Gucci, 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 Gucci. <laughs> we got a lot to go through, and a brother ain't acting like it, so pray for me, amen? But it's good to laugh in the house of the Lord, amen? I believe in Jesus' name as you're in his holy house with his holy presence surrounding you, flowing in you and through you, because his breath keeps you alive. If you have Jesus Christ as, lo as Lord, if, you're, if Jesus Christ is your Lord, you live for eternity. No one can take your breath, Amen? I believe that with all my heart. Hallelujah. If you don't have Jesus Christ as Lord, then your breath is numbered. You, your breath, hear my heart. Your breath is numbered, and I pray that you can end your breath in receiving Jesus. Amen. Or, unfortunately, as we know, hell is enlarging every day. Right? And there are souls that are taking their last breath without. And guess what? Their very next breath is in what we call damnation. I rebuke that. Amen. Amen. So I pray in Jesus' name and, and family as we worship, as you guys know, get out of this. Do this with me. We're not religious here. We're not. Holy Spirit's our teacher. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to worship with you, and I pray as a mouthpiece that Holy Spirit will speak to you. Remember, we just ask for a word. Amen. Amen. Like, Father, give me that word and just, just, just rock me. It's never the one talking. It's all Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. So check this out. Living Easter every day of the week. And um, we're going to start with everyone. Amen. Then we're going to go into agape. Then we're going to go into salvation. Then we're going to go into trust. Then we're going to go every day. And then we're going to go resurrection. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say it with me, every day. So everyone, agape. Who is agape? Poof. Who's agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Can you break them apart? No. No. Say with me, I rebuke that. Hallelujah. You can't, you, listen, you, you, you can't have God without Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, he's the only way to good and perfect. He is the good one. Amen. And then, guess what? You cannot have Holy Spirit without Jesus. Come on now, family. Right now, in this fallen evil word, spirituality is a big thing now. Oh, you got good vibes, bruh. You got good vibes. You got good spirit, bruh. You, you, you got good, oh, you got aloha spirit, bruh. No? No? I got agape. Can I get an amen? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? You, you cannot be spiritual without Lord Jesus Christ. Guess what? You can but it's worser and worser because that's demons. Amen. Amen. Say his name, Jesus Christ. He's the only way, he's the truth, and he is the abundant life. What we, like, what we love to say, gooder. Amen. Hallelujah, gooder life. Praise God. It just, and it really does, don't it? Amen. Amen. How many of you testify that you're living a gooder life? Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Give God praise for that. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Glory be to God. All right, so every day of the week, let's get into it. We're going to be in these books. Just get it out. Get it out right now. Go, whoo. It's bad when my wife had to do that. Everybody else in the church is like, yeah, that's good. Chris is like, whoo. We're going to be in Mark 11. This is mainly the foundation of Scripture, but then we're going to go into the rest of the books because, remember, we're talking about living Easter every day of the week. Amen? Living Easter every day of the week. I pray, I pray by now, if you're, if you're a first-time guest, once again, please let us know because we got a gift for you and we want to let you know, welcome home. But also, if you're rooted here, you would know through the revelation of Holy Spirit that we do not celebrate days like the world does. Because the days that the world celebrate is our God who is alive inside of us. Can I get an amen? 
So when I talk about living Easter, I know some, some of you are like, man, this is weird. I never heard this before. Good. Good. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Welcome home, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to, you're going to hear the word of God like you never have before. So I got to read a lot, so I'm going to start reading. Amen? Are we good? Tell your face that. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Beth, 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 Beth how do you say that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Beth, Beth, God bless you. <laughs> Pastor, how do you pronounce that? That's gooder. Bethphage. Praise God. See, if you don't know, ask, right? I believe in pride. We don't ask because we're ashamed. But I, I don't know. Listen, I'm not smart enough to be standing here. Amen? So believe you me, I don't know. So I'm not going to act like, amen, Pastor? I'm not going to act like I know how to say, I done forgot already. <laughs> Bethphage. Well, we only got to say it one time, all right? You guys get it? If you don't know how to say it, ask pastor. And Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which, say it with me, no one. No one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it. Say that with me. The Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here shortly. So no, number one, I want you to understand this, is that this donkey is innocent. This donkey, this is significant now because this donkey's never been ridden. Now, if you're like pastor, pastor got a bunch of baby donkeys on, on his farm. Amen. That's a miracle in itself just to get up on a donkey and ride it when it's never been ridden before. Can you get an amen? amen? So this is just, this is very symbolic because I'm just going to tell you. In Deuteronomy 17, I believe it's in, you can write it down, check for yourself. But I believe it's in verse 16. The promises for the kings back then is that they're not going to multiply horses or ride on horses for kings or the people will be rebellious and will displease God. This is why Lord Jesus Christ asked for a virgin donkey. To show all of us right now as we sit here worshiping our good and perfect Savior that his life for the three or so years that he carried the ministry, everything was divinely orchestrated by God. Amen. That Lord Jesus Christ's very existence on this world was not to just show people, here I am, I'm God in the flesh, na 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 boo boo, no. He was here because he had to fulfill every bit of the law in the past to bring in the new through his blood and sacrifice. Can I get an amen? amen. So it's very important that we see this, this baby donkey here that he rode. In Zechariah, this is about 500 years before Jesus, about 520 years to be somewhat. The coming of Zion's king, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, say it with me, shout. Shout, daughter, daughter Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Let's give God praise. Amen. Whew. All right, so we're, we're getting somewhere, aren't we? The prophet, he spoke it out, and he said, here's the king, and he's going to ride in. And this is 520 years before. Hallelujah, before. You go back even further in Deuteronomy, right? And Deuteronomy says that kings, you're not going to multiply horses. You're not going to ride in on horses. Amen? Amen. Don't you love the, the, just the order of that? Say it with me, order. order. I mean, we can't hear my heart, family. At one point in my life, I thought I was a theologian. But guess what? The more and more I thought I was a theologian, the more and more and more I did not know nothing. Because I believe with all my heart, you can just get so smart and so prideful that guess what? God will turn you over to yourself and you won't know nothing. Amen. But it takes worshiping God. Amen. It takes spending time with God. Right? It, it takes being on your face. 
It, 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 takes, it, it takes just wanting to grow deeper in your relationship. Say it with me, intimacy. When you have intimacy with God, Holy Spirit will teach you things that I'll tell you right now, only Holy Spirit can teach you. And here's, it gets gooder and gooder because when he teaches you, it changes your life. You see what I'm saying? There's revelation that people are after where awe. Man, mm, that sounds real good, and you know, I could go repeat that. Well, guess what? I rebuke that kind of revelation. What I want is revelation from Holy Spirit that completely changes me through repentance. Amen? That, 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 you're, that you're quick to just throw up your hands and go, oh, my goodness, Father God, thank you. Thank you, Father God, for teaching me that. Thank you, Father God, that now I know why. Now I know why I should do dishes. A lot of the sons of God right now look at me sideways, right? Amen. But sometimes we got to do things that, you know, guess what? It's a sacrifice, right? Right? So they went and found a colt outside in the street, tied it at a the doorway. They untied it. Some people standing there asked, what are you doing? Untying that colt. They answered and said, Jesus had told them to. Amen? Amen. What's Jesus telling you to do right now? What's Holy Spirit telling you to do right now? Huh? Right now in your life, what is Jesus telling you to do? See? Get closer. Let go. Focus. Whoop. Come on. Trust. Good word. Listen. Come on, beloved. Harvest. Come on. Mighty harvest. Hallelujah. Say it with me. There's a harvest. Oh, amen. See, right now, Holy Spirit's giving you words, telling you what to do. Amen. So the answer is said, Jesus told him to do it. And the people let them go. When they brought the coat back to Jesus, their cloaks were over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leaves. That, that's the palm branches, amen? And, of course, the palm branches are significant, uh, um, symbolic. It's significant because it's for royalty, right, as far as welcoming, hallelujah. Their cloaks is, you know, just a form of submission unto him. But you could just imagine as far as all this is happening, but yet you guys know what's about to happen. Right? This is the preparation of Holy Week. Yes, we call it Palm Sunday. Amen? And here's the reason why. Right? The question I have for you is, 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 that's what, is that what happening right now inside of you? Is, is that how you usher in Holy Spirit? Huh? You lay everything down at his feet? Huh? Amen? I mean, is your offering in your heart everything? Or is there something going on in your heart? That you're still in charge of. Right? But isn't it like us that we think we're in charge? But we ain't really in charge of anything. Amen? And it's these moments right here in worship that Father God's saying, y you felt that. You know what it is. You know, there, there, there's some of us right now that maybe our marriages aren't looking, our relationships aren't looking the way it should. And we're trying everything we can to, 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 to fight and, 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 and get that back where it was or, or, to, or to try to say, right, or try to, but God is saying, will you let that go? Amen. Amen. Would, 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 would you give that to me? Father God is asking, will you give that to me? And I promise you, as you give it to him, watch what will happen in your life. Amen. So say it with me, that was Monday. So check this out. Those who went ahead, those who followed, shouted, Hosanna. That means in the Hebrew expression, Savior, save, amen. Hosanna, say it with me, Hosanna. Hosanna. We, don't hear, we don't hear that a lot, do we? We hear hallelujah a lot, right? Hallelujah? But I mean, we don't really hear Hosanna, right? Hosanna a lot. Hosanna, blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed the kingdom of the Father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. He went to go stay with um, Lazarus and Mary and Martha, you know, in Bethany. But don't you love it that Lord Jesus Christ, even through his long journey, his heart was, I need to get to the temple. I need to go to my daddy's house. Amen. See, right now, you're in his holy house. Amen? 
How many of you know on a Sunday morning, it's the hardest time to wake up in the morning? Amen. Testify. Half y'all ain't lifting your hands because you're ashamed. Get over it. You're here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You're here. Amen. You're here. It, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> am, I, am I just sharing too much with y'all? I mean, we're family for eternity. We got to get, we got to get over it. Amen. You're going to know everything about me. I mean, seriously, sometimes Sunday morning, the beds never felt so comfortable. Right? It's like, my goodness, my hip is all snug in there. Right? I even feel like my ankle got the good support. When did I ever feel my ankle? But on a Sunday morning, you will. And guess what? Oh, it just feels amazing. Right? But then you have to hear that voice. Get up. But does God make you? He allows us to, amen? And I'm so grateful for y'all that, you know, all y'all made your way out here to celebrate, hallelujah, this holy week, amen? And here in my heart, this is the time, say it with me, this is the time. This is the time for you to be that shining, glorious light in Holy Spirit for your family and friends to invite them to come. Amen? To some of you, and you know this, and I'm going to speak this word of confirmation through Holy Spirit to some of you, this is the only time that you're going to reap a harvest. And it's during this week when the whole world knows what's taking place. Amen. And I encourage you to do so. Amen. If you need help, my number's on the back of the bulletin. Hit me up. Hit me up. Walk over there like a bill collector. <laughs> yeah, so-and-so sent me. You need Jesus. Give me a hug. Or, coochie, 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 coochie. Right? We just got to love on everybody. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? All right. Are you guys ready to move forward? So that was Monday. Look at We got a lot to go through. Y'all thought I was kidding, huh? Half y'all look crunchy. We got a lot to go through. Because what are we talking about? Living Easter every day of the week. Amen? amen? So this is what Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples. Go, untie, and bring. Amen? Amen? Go and time bring. So let's go through this. We're going to go pretty fast, okay? Yes. Amen? Amen? Mark 11, 12, 14, the next day, the next day, say with me, next day. Amen. As they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, seeing in a distance a fig tree in leaf. This means that it's season. It's season. Say with me, it's season. season. Say with me, the season's now. Season. See, the season's now, beloved children of God, holy people, saints, Children of God, say it with me, that's me. The season's now that God wants you to be producing fruit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Say it with me, harvest. harvest. Brother Joey said it. Amen? Seeing in a distance the fig tree leaf went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing. Say it with me, that ain't me. That ain't me. Amen. Praise God. No leaf. But it was, it was the season for figs. Then he said, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Later on that day, he went to the temple. Because remember, Monday night, he went to the temple, but it was really late, right? But he was just checking things out, amen? But check this out. The next day, he goes to the temple, and you all know what he did at the temple. Here, let's read the scripture. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the holy temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables, the money changers, and the benches of those selling doves. And would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And also taught them, he said, it is not written. Is it not written, my house will be called a house of, say we prayer, prayer. For all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Amen. So Tuesday, what did Jesus do? What did our Lord do? He showed about the fruit. Amen. And then he showed about the holy temple. Right. Say it with me. Fruit. And the holy temple. Amen. Say it with me, Wednesday. In the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. But truly, say his name, Holy Spirit. But truly, what I believe with all my heart, what agape in the flesh was looking at, was him being cursed on that tree. 
Are we getting somewhere? Are we getting somewhere? Amen? Because is not the one that hung on the tree cursed? Does the Bible not say? And he carried all those curses for us. All of your past, all of your present sins, and all of your future sins. Amen? Amen. He says this in, 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 as we continue on in Mark. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Amen? Amen. Therefore, hallelujah, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you also. Amen? Amen. So l l let me ask you something. As Lord Jesus Christ is speaking these words, I believe with all my heart Wednesday was a day of complete repentance because he encounters the tree that was cursed and he saw the fruit of what that cursed tree looked like. And I believe with all my heart that Lord Jesus Christ being God Almighty, that he saw himself on that tree being the payment for us. And then I believe with all my heart that Lord Jesus Christ, because God is a God of order, and his love is perfect, his love is beyond what we can comprehend or contain, all he's asking for us to do is focus on his love. Amen? Amen? Don't focus on other people. Don't focus on what people are struggling with. Don't focus on people not living right. Don't focus on people doing drugs. Don't focus on people, oh, they said a bad word. Don't focus on, he's not preaching from KJV. He's not, come on now, focus on the love of Jesus Christ. Can I get a hallelujah? In the name of Jesus, come on now. Somebody get excited for the Lord. Because there's some of you right now going, look at how excited he is. Didn't you just don't like being excited? That's where you're at. And guess what? That's where, that's where the anointing stops. Because you put yourself in the position of a judge. And there's only one judge. He's seated at the throne of mercy and grace. Hallelujah. His name is Lord Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to be his beloved son that's going to love everybody. Say it with me, everybody. everybody. I ain't going to judge you because you know why? And when I look at every one of you, I see Jesus. I see your value, your God-purchased value. Hallelujah. That you are his beloved and that he died for you. This means that you are not, you are not an addict. You are not a mess up. You are not an accident. Amen. You are not abused. Amen. You are not used. You are not trash. You are not garbage. You know who you are? You are royalty in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it when Lord Jesus Christ, he, he, he teaches all this. He teaches all this because without no doubt, he knows I am. Say it with me, I am. Lord Jesus Christ, he knows that I am the word of God. And when I speak and I believe it, I will have what I say. And when I tell this mountain to move, it will move. And I love it because he says, whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe it and you believe that you have received it. Amen. Amen? Amen. Listen, if you're battling through some kind of health issue right now in Jesus name you keep believing that the stripes that he took on his body paid for that very thing that you are you think you're going through hallelujah that I am healed by your stripes and here's the beauty do you believe it because in my hear my heart family I'm not judging you I'm just saying in Joey Karangan's relationship with the Lord if I believe it that means I'm going to walk it out I'm going to walk it out. If I go on Google and I check, if I go on Google and I check, why do I have gas? Is that a good idea? No. 
Is that faith? Oh, but bro, oh, hey, beloved, hey, holy church, hallelujah. Listen, I'm talking to all of God's army right now. You are the army of the Lord. You are saints. You are royalty. You're his beloved. You're his prized possession. He lives inside of you. He reigns inside of you. But here in my heart, I have to preach this way because some, some of us need to hear this. That I say that I have faith, that I'm healed by his stripes, but that the very next moment, why am I passing gas so much? Maybe it's because of all the broccoli you ate. I don't know, but why do we do that? Why do, why do we say we have faith in, in Jesus, and in the very next breath, we're running to the doctor, asking the doctor, and running with his report, and, but yet we say we... we re now hear my heart. God has blessed and ordained the doctors. Amen? Amen? God has blessed the nurses. God has blessed medicine. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Because, because I believe sometimes when a, when a preacher preaches this way, some people get really upset or angry in pride because they are going to the doctor. Hear my heart, beloved child of God. All I'm saying to you is thank God for that doctor. Don't make that doctor God. Amen. Can I get an amen? Don't take what the doctor says and go, okay, well, this is what I have. No, okay, this is your opinion. Lord Jesus, this is what they say, but I know that you paid for it by your strike. Amen. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Half the room, like, listen, God doesn't force himself. He doesn't. He's a gentleman. Amen. But it is in his word that because of what Lord Jesus Christ took on that cross, we are healed. Amen. And guess what? I'm the kind of brother that I'm just running with it. Amen. Amen. No, you're not going to slow me down. No, you're not going to stop me. No, I'm not going to look at your boo-boo. No, I'll pray for your boo-boo because your boo-boo is healed by his stripes. Can I get a hallelujah? I think that's the problem these days now, right? That somebody's in faith and, and just moving in such momentum spiritually, and a loved one or somebody goes, hey, but look at this, look what I'm going through, and they stop, and they're like, huh. Okay, well, I'll pray for you, and I believe in healing and all this stuff, and you pray, lay hands on them, and the very next breath is, yeah, I got an appointment next week, and I really don't know what. And guess what? You start having that conversation and what happens to your faith, it starts to get affected. And say it with me, no more. Holy Spirit, God who is living inside of you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says that. Don't you know that his spirit is alive in you, Brother Jason? And that his spirit that reigns inside of you, oh, you have the resurrection power of Christ living inside of you. Hallelujah. 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 So say it with me. It's time. I believe it's time for us to lay some things down at this altar, to, to get rid of some things that we may have allowed, right? Right? I mean, how many of you are just on fire for God, and all it takes is that one familiar person in your life to go, well, you know, it, it just ain't all about that. And the moment you hear that, you're like this. And then you're like, man, I was doing good, but now all of a sudden, dude, Crunchy over here just rubbed off Crunchy on me. Right? But now you, know how, now you know how to fight against that, right? Let me explain. You're in the overflow of his presence, his holy presence. Holy Spirit says pray for him. You already know that when you're done praying, you're going to hear something because God will tell you. God will tell you before you're even done praying, as soon as you're done, they're going to start speaking death, speaking negativity and all that stuff, right? The moment they start, just say, you know what, in Jesus' name, you're healed by it. But what about, you're healed by that too. But what about, you're healed by that too. But do we need to pray again? Do we need to pray again? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Say it with me. That was Wednesday. Wednesday is the word of faith. Hallelujah. Thursday. Come on now. It's also known as Mon Maundy Thursday, right? The washing of feet, serving, amen? And this is what happened on Thursday. That evening meal progressed, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things, say it with me, all things. 
So you're telling me Jesus knew that he had all the power? Don't you love moments like this in the living word, in the written word, where our Lord, sitting there, knew, God give me all authority and power to just end this. I don't have to go through the cross. How many of you know that if you were going through a season and God gave you the power to completely rebuke the season, how many of us would exercise that power? Because that's who we are, right? But let me explain the magnitude of his love that even though he had that power that I myself raised my hand saying, I will use the power Christ gave me to stop that thing. But God, say it with me, but God, but God chose to lay down his power to serve us and to do the ultimate serving, Brother Cody, on that cross. Amen? And I love it because he... he, he he, well, well, let's just read it. Under his power, and then he come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Say with me, this was Thursday. Thursday. Amen. Say this word with me, serve. serve. Hallelujah, serve. Hallelujah, and here's Friday. Praise God. Some of us were raised calling it Good Friday. If you're like me, ever since I was little, I was like, what's so good about it? If I'm just confessing, right? I look at that picture when I was little, and I was like, how dare... I honestly, I remember being seven, eight years old going, how evil are we that we call this good? I mean, look at him, right? There's other pictures here. You see, every one of those stripes that we can visualize that was on our God. Let me ask you something. Was cancer on his body? Huh? COVID, was COVID on his body? Was, was anxiety on his body? Worry? Depression? Addiction? Huh? Was it on his body? And he freely took it all. Amen. But then we do know now in Holy Spirit being saved by his grace. That the reason why it's good is because this act of God once and for all purchased our souls. Amen. Amen. Once, say it with me, once and for all. all. We're set free. And it's only through his holy blood. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. This is the first thing he said in the book of Luke. Forgive them, for they, not, they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes by casting lots. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, forgive them. Forgive so on Friday, he forgave. Say it with me, Saturday. Saturday. Whew, praise God, we're getting through this. Hallelujah. Are you all getting something this morning? Amen. Amen. Saturday, say it with me, hell lost another one. It was said, it was said this morning, it was said, it was said right here at the altar through, through Principal Sarah. As hard as that work was, being tortured and crucified on that cross, we have no idea as far as what our Lord did in those three days. But what I do know is that he saved my soul. And what I do know is because he's so perfect, he now lives, say with me, in me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And say with me Sunday. We have an awesome Sunday service planned next week. Please keep that lifted up in prayer. The enemy's trying to put out every distraction he possibly can to not have um, parents available, to not have their kids here rehearsing for the play. But guess what? God's already there, and it's gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. But on Sunday was the manifestation of his promise, our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And say that with me, manifestation. Amen. Amen. So we go through every day of the week, right? Monday, go, untie, bring. Tuesday, the fruit, the holy temple. Wednesday, the word of faith. Thursday, to serve. Friday, to forgive. And Sunday is the manifestation of all of these fruits. Amen? Amen. And then the question remains, well, what about Saturday, Sabbath? Well, we talked about what happened Saturday, right? How many of you know that Saturday is Sabbath day? Sabbat, right? How many of you know that? For, amen? It's not Sunday, it's Saturday. To some of you, that's a spoiler. I mean, some of you are like, what? Guess what? Let me just put this scripture up here to give you peace, okay? If only you had known the meaning of I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. Once again, we open this worship service clearly explaining that in the New Covenant Church, we're not the, we're not the church, we're not the people that celebrate today. Our God lives inside of us. Amen? Amen? You see, it's one thing when you say that, oh, you know, I got to do this because it's Sabbath day. It's Sabbath day. It's Sabbath day. It's Saturday. Or to some people, it's Sunday. I'm not here to judge anybody. But what I'm here to tell you is that Father God took a day and removed it and replaced it with a person. And his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So check this out. This is what I love about Saturday. Is that we should always be harvesting souls for the kingdom. Say it with me. I desire mercy. When you study this word that Lord Jesus Christ echoed, when he said, I desire mercy, when you study this word, what God is saying is he delights in. What God is saying is that he is happy, he is happy in. What God is saying is that he is fulfilled in. And say this word with me, mercy. Beloved church family, we are here in this vapor of a life for the last few minutes because that trumpet is about to go off. And what God is desiring from us is to show loved ones mercy. Is to show people mercy. Listen, you cannot win somebody over by... You cannot win people over by saying, this is what God says. But when you can be the mercy of God, and be that person to just, maybe you don't have nothing to say. Holy Spirit says, just listen. Guess what? That's showing mercy. Maybe you could be the one to just hug somebody. Well, I don't like hugging. Get over yourself. One, two, three. It ain't about me. Last time I checked, God Almighty gives the greatest hugs. Amen. Amen. And guess what? I want to live my life. I mean, I'll hug a tree. I don't care. I, I don't care. Seriously, Trish tells me all the time, you, you, would hug a, you would hug a shopping cart. Yeah, I would. If it needed it, I would hug it. Amen? But I encourage you, family. I believe with all my heart, if Open Arms Community Church can just show, can understand this revelation right now, that if I can just show mercy. Well, Pastor, explain once you start showing them mercy, they're going to be so in awe of God's presence that guess what? Holy Spirit will start moving on their heart. Holy Spirit will start knocking on the doors of their heart. Well, Pastor, you're telling me I don't need to pray? I don't need to preach? No. You know why? Lord Jesus Christ lives inside of you if you have him as your Lord and Savior. His presence is enough. Believe you me. His presence is enough. Amen. And this is the beauty. We live in a culture now these days that everybody defines everybody in a, as a title, right? Or what church they go to, or what ministry they're ahead of, or what. Hear my heart. Here's a challenge to you. Just be mercy. You know why? Because mercy lives inside of you. Last time I checked, you didn't do anything to earn your place in heaven. 
He did it all. Hallelujah. He did it all. And let me ask you something. When you came and called on his name, did he look at you and say, well, you know what? You don't got this together. You know what? You've been in this many relationships. That's one too many. You know what? You did this many drugs. That's one too many. Did he ask you to recite scriptures to him? Did he ask you to get yourself right before you come to him? So the question is, why do we have that attitude towards others? Why do we have that attitude towards others? Because they're in a season of struggle or maybe they're in a season of hurt. That now all of a sudden we're, hmm, 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 hmm. When we ain't no gooder than them. And all God is saying, I delight in mercy. Because guess what? There's only one sacrifice that pleased God. And it was his sacrifice. Amen. If you all would stand up on your feet with me, praise God. So everyone obey his command. Say with me, agape. Agape, this means that you're going to bear Holy Spirit fruit. Amen? Amen. Salvation is worship, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, salvation isn't a day. Salvation is a person. Amen. And it's his salvation that is inside of every one of us. Amen? Amen. Trust. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Trust. Trust. Repent, not my will is yours. On the count of three. One, two, three. It's not about me, amen? Every day serve one another in agape. And resurrection, forgave, forgive, forgiven, and forgiving, amen? amen. Do you want that to be you one day? Amen? amen. So I declare in Jesus' name through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that every ear that has ear to hear has taken a word from this that Easter is not just a celebration of a week or a day. The Holy One lives inside of us. And I pray in Jesus' name that the manifestation of His presence, that His sweet conviction will allow us, will encourage us to repent because God doesn't push Himself on you. And I believe in the name of Lord Jesus Christ that through the anointing power of his resurrection inside of you, that as you offer God this worship and this sacrifice, God will bless you with mercy upon mercy. Amen? Amen. Maybe you're here th uh, this evening or th this morning. Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you think that you were invited to come here and you came because so-and-so invited you or you had nothing else to do. I'm here to tell you the enemy's trying to lie to you and that's a lie from the pit of hell. God wanted you here this morning. Amen. And you hear God's love through Christ our Lord and you hear this power that Christ can only give and it's only through Christ. And it's the power of his Holy Spirit and God promises that when you speak of his name, that if you're bold and you're not ashamed, if you speak of his name, making him Lord and Savior, God, our Father, promises that in your next breath, Holy Spirit will live in, inside of you abundantly. And in this glory, I want to ask every soul here, if that's you today that you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and you want him to be your Lord and Savior, or maybe you just say, you know what, I was in the past, but I don't know. Honestly, Pastor, if, if, if I took my last breath today, God forbid, because I believe we'll all get raptured out of here soon. But if you took your last breath and you have this question inside of you that I don't know where I'm going to wind up, right now God Almighty is knocking on the door of your heart. He's asking you, will you receive him? If that's you, will you be bold enough to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't want to go another day without knowing. Family, keep everyone lifted up in prayer right now. Praise God. This is the moment. This is the moment in a lifetime for some of these folks. And hear my heart when I say this. 
Hell is enlarging. There are souls going to hell. I can't be a preacher of grace and live by grace and not tell you there is the other side. One more time. If that's you, raise your hand and be, be proud of Lord Jesus Christ and say, that's me. I don't know where I'm headed. I don't know where I'm going. Praise God. So everybody's saved here in this, in, this, in this house. Everybody's saved. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. So before we get up to at this altar with the couple songs that we got left to play, um, Holy Spirit asked me to give you homework this week. Amen? And the homework is, will you reach out to somebody in mercy? Maybe it's somebody that you had quarrels with for a long time now. To some of you, you don't even know what the quarrel is, but that's what pride does. Over time, it, you just become calloused and you just hate somebody because you just, you just hate them. I'm going to tell you right now, that's evil. That's the devil. And it was nailed to that cross. Will you show them mercy? Amen. Maybe there's somebody right now going through hardship in their relationship with your spouse. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe it's time to, maybe it's time to just say sorry, to start sowing those seeds so that we can start reaping it. Amen. But whatever it is, the altar's open. I encourage you to come. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Mm -hmm.